Ebola. It is a disease in Spain. As a fatality, when we compare it to chikungunya, chikungunya has low fatality. So they are of importance because of, for two different reasons. Ebola is a disease that is transmitted by body fluids. It's not transmitted by casual contact, but essentially body fluids that include blood, semen, saliva, urine, feces are the principal mode. The pattern that is emerging is that um, caregivers and healthcare workers seem to be the people most at risk. How did Ebola get into the population? It got into the population through exposure to dead animals that um, were hosts for this virus or people eating uncooked um, game in those countries. And the game includes in the continent, in West Africa. But over last week, they had a, a malaria or dengue um, from, from those countries. As those countries were Bahamas, um, Barbados and Trinidad, all reported negative. So this is where we are. We have no cases, but we, we have to be in a preparation mode. It is indeed a sigh of relief for residents to learn that there are no cases in Belize. But what today's conference did reveal was that should in the event Belize is faced with a case of Ebola, there are no preparations in place to address the disease at any of the facilities in Belize. As a matter of fact, what the media sensed today was that there are only theoretical plans to address prevention and or mitigation. We expressed our concerns to the Director of Health Services, Dr. Michael Pitts, who in turn told us that the health sector is aware of what they need to get done and that they will be bringing agencies together in the next few days to discuss the prevention at the border points. Clearly, we need to have the airport immigration on board with us and of course um, tourist industry etc etc there's an international health process that we do so for the country we've been going through steps for, for several years to implement certain things to help protect countries against these emerging disease it's not specific for ebola but i believe in 2005 we sign on to agreement what we should do for these diseases. Externally, they set a certain standard, maybe because of what all resources, we can't meet the standard, but we could work on the guiding principles that they use. And that's why it sounds a little theoretical, because we have to adjust down sometimes, right? We might not, we cannot, in something like what Grenada is doing, Pitts went on to share with the media the various challenges that Belize, as a small country with limited resources, faces. The fact that Carl is the only ICU, that is the fact that we have on the ground. To get a new ICU, we have to look at what it costs. So we have to consider alternative. What we need, we, we have to assess and see what we could. What the consideration is to have the separate ward we have a group of people identified to give the intensive care and you would have to isolate all the equipment. The equipment you use for Ebola, you can't very well come back and use it in your general ICU. So that is what we are trying to work on. In some of the countries, in fact, even in Liberia, what you are seeing that they put in place um, the field hospitals to give that type of attention. And those are some of the things that we are considering. Another thing we are looking at is at the airport. Um, in the past, we had a building on the airport. It was wooden, but that decayed. So we are trying to replace that to say that at the airport, we could isolate people without allowing them to come to Belize City, but then that is PGIA. We'd have to do similar things at um, the western border, northern border, and so on. So that is why it seems as though things are out there hanging. But we have the steps, so just pull the resources. We identify the different problem areas. Um, one of the biggest problems that we have, we are tight in terms of our total nurse and doctor population. And we have to be careful with how we deploy them and use them. 
if I deploy people to Ebola ICU and it is the same set of people that I should deploy into the ICU when we have the gunshot, what will happen? See, so I have to expand the team and see where we get it from. The word Ebola was taken from the name of a river in Zaire, Africa, and came about in 1976. The virus was first recognized in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, formerly Zaire, in Africa. Up to today, researchers believe that the virus is zoonotic, meaning animal-born, and is normally maintained in an animal host that is native to the African continent. But the exact location, origin, and natural habitat known as the natural reservoir remain unknown, leaving research scientists to continue to search for the exact animal host. The main symptoms of Ebola include fever greater than 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit, severe headaches, muscle pains, weakness, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal stomach pain, and unexplained hemorrhage, meaning bleeding or bruising. The symptoms may appear anywhere from 2 to 21 days after exposure to Ebola, but the average is 8 to 10 days. An infected person can recover from Ebola, depending on good supportive clinical care and the patient's immune response. People who recover from Ebola infections develop antibodies that last for at least 10 years. Reporting for Love News, I am Renee Trujillo.